let's talk about the stationary and critical points so it's very interesting actually I, I think uh, I've never given it a thought not until I, I was thinking about making this video about that so actually I've always known that when it comes to determining the critical points or stationary points it's of course a point where we expect that the dy dx is equal to zero well while there's nothing wrong with that I didn't understand where the word stationary came from so let's consider this graph maybe let me draw it more carefully so that you can see certain points that I want to be visible um, I'll draw the first part of the graph like that Maybe let me end it like okay, and then I'll begin it like this. Okay, <coughs> so I think that's that's what I want. So when you look at this graph, this part is increasing that part is decreasing this part is increasing this part is reducing okay so there's what we call increasing at a reducing rate and all that you talk we talk about it as we move so this is increasing at a decreasing rate this part increasing at a decreasing rate because we are leaching at a maximum so it's increasing at a decreasing rate and then this is increasing at an increasing rate okay so a basic idea is if you give you an examples of an exponential function which increases at an increasing rate and then also a, a natural log which increases at a decreasing rate it's um, more like this so it's not as increasing as fast but it's increasing so increasing at a decreasing rate and then this is increasing at an increasing rate okay just know that for now but there's also that so I've already mentioned to say this part you can see the graph is increasing or reducing and even this, this part is still reducing okay so don't worry about that for now so if you look at this point we draw a tangent there and then you can draw a tangent there so these points where the dy dx is equal to zero or where the tangents to the curve are parallel to the x-axis if you want in other terms but what you need to understand is at that point dy dx is equal to zero so at that point the graph is said to be constant it is neither decreasing nor increasing so we call it a stationary point stationary because the function is never increasing or decreasing so it's like stationary stationary means no change okay so at that point so at these points where dy dx is equal to zero we refer to as stationary points because the dy dx is equal to zero or in other terms the function is never increasing nor decreasing okay now not only do we have that point we also have um, the point where the the decreasing part the decreasing parts are meeting one from the minimum point the other one from the maximum point so where there's that change of behavior so uh, more accurately what happens is eh, this part is coming from the from the the maximum part like this and then another part going to the minima comes to join so there's this part which is of course in decreasing at a decreasing rate and then there's this part decreasing at uh, approaching the minima so at this point where that there is that change you can see there's a, more like a curve okay like this um, 
this and then <laughs> that's what it done anyway this is what I'm trying to talk about the point where that occurs is called uh, a point of inflection so even at that point the dy dx is equal to zero okay so a point of inflection so a function is never maximum or minimum at that point but dy dx so when dy dx is equal to zero and then the point is never a maxima nor a minima point the point is called a point of inflection so of course we'll look at the second derivative so the second derivative is what helps us to determine whether if a point is a maxima or a minima so of course when the second derivative did, did, yeah when the second derivative is greater than zero or in other terms positive the, the point is said to be a minima when the second derivative is less than zero meaning that it's negative it is a maxima but of course in a case where it is equal to zero that's now what we call a point of inflation so stationary points are points where the dy dx of the derivative is equal to zero and we've got three examples of stationary points maxima minima and the point of inflation okay now what are critical points so what you need to understand is the stationary points we've talked about are critical points okay so a critical point is these are points where the dy dx is equal to zero or the function does not exist or equivalent we can say or the derivative does not exist at that point so meaning that a critical points is a bigger set consisting of stationary points as well I can give you an example of such a curve so we can take this the some same normal kind of a curve okay so of course I believe you've talked about certain points that may be undefined okay but of course being more realistic which usually happens in most of the cases where you approach uh, a zero and at the point where x is equal to zero usually undefined <coughs> but it can be at any point okay so that would be in a case where on the denominator for example you just have x and then you have a certain function on top something like that so a case why x is, a, is, is like is equal to zero at that point you expect that the function is not defined this may be a derivative or just a function itself so at that point that point is is actually a point you can refer to as it can still be called a critical point so this may even be at the minima or maxima it would be a critical point so what makes it different is that stationary points are basically stationary points are restricted to a part where dy dx is equal to zero in a case where the derivative of a function is undefined those are still referred to as critical points so critical points is a bigger set broader as compared to the stationary points and I think this is the key difference that most students get to miss now let's look at a few practice questions that will just help us solidify whatever we've talked about so consider a case where f of x is equal to x to the power 3 minus 3x three squared minus 9x plus 5 so find the, all the critical points of that function how do you do it so of course we expect to differentiate the function so we're going to have 3x squared minus 6x minus 9 so that is our derivative function so for us how do you find the critical points so we've said the critical points of course whether they still the critical points or stationary points this you expect that the intersection part is where the dy dx is expected to be equal to zero so equate the derivative function to a zero and then try to find the value of x now you can clearly see that this is now what that is now a quadratic function that you can easily look at 
So of three is common, you can factorize it to make it simpler. So what we can remain with what? x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And then we can factorize what is inside, of course. So if we do factorize what is inside there, we're going to have x plus 1, x minus 3 equal to 0, which can easily help us find the values of x. So x is equal to negative 1, and then x is equal to positive 3. You can solve that using any formula you want, either by factorization, as I've done it, by formula, or by completing the square. So the critical points can be found by you can find you would have to find the y values so you only you found the x values so negative one comma something three comma something so what you're going to put there is now for you to get the y value you need to go back to the original function plug in the value of what plug in the value of the x that you found so for negative one if you plug in negative one negative one to the power three is negative one and then that is minus three positive 9 plus 5, 9 plus 5 is 14, 14 minus 4, I believe that gives us a 10, and then all the same, if you plug in a 3 there, you get a negative 22. So that's how you find the stationary or the critical points, given a simple curve <coughs> like that one. Let's take it a bit more interesting, and then get to look at something more advanced, like that, you look at and exponential function <clears throat> so of course we've said for you to handle any of these you need to first of all look at what you need to look at the issue of finding the derivative function so f of inverse of t is going to be equal to how do you differentiate an exponential function so multiply by the derivative of the power natural log of a base so in this case, the derivative of negative 3t is negative 3. And then we multiply the origin of the function itself. And then natural log of a base, which is just natural log of v in this case. So that means that will disappear. Well, I'm trying to mention that because you may have a case where you have 2x. How do you differentiate that? Derivative is derivative of a power, which is a 1. Maybe if I put it to a power 3x, the derivative of a power is 3 multiply by the original part and then natural log of 2 now for e natural log of e is just the 1 so that's what we have and then the derivative of 2t is just a 2 so at that point we've differentiated the function now for us to determine the <coughs> for us to determine the critical points we need to equate this to 0 right plus 2 is equal to zero so how do you basically get to such a point where this is going to be equal to zero so obviously <coughs> we can take the constant the other side negative e to 3t plus equal to becomes negative 2 the other side and then of course if you divide by the negative of three both sides e uh, what are we going to have we're going to have 3e or e to the power negative 3t is equal to 2 over 3 so how do we get to find the value of uh, of t what's the best way for us to find the value of of that so the, the, the way we would handle that is by introducing the natural log on both sides since we know that it is basically the inverse of e so you are going to have negative 3t is equal to natural log of 2 over 3. So natural log of 2 over 3 is something that you can actually simplify using a calculator. So of course you can divide again by negative 3 both sides. So you are going to have negative 1 over 3 and then natural log of 3 over 2. So you can simplify that on the calculator. So what you're going to find there is a value of t which is more like the value of x and then to find the value of y, you'd have to go back to the function and substitute there. Yeah, that's how we are going to find the critical point. I'm ju I just needed to mention that, that of course, it's not as complicated as, uh, as, as it sounds. Okay. So, no matter what you're given, 
if you want to find the critical points all you just have to do is equate the derivative function to zero so let's consider now one more interesting form of the function that I'd want us to to look at so what if <coughs> f of x um, is equal to x and then raised to the power 2 over 3 feel free to just pause the video and just try to determine the critical points the derivative becomes 2 over 3 and then x reduce the power by 1 so 2 over 3 minus a 1 that's going to be what? negative 1 over 3 now some of you know that if you've got x raised to the negative power you can just take it to the bottom so that you have 2 over 3x and then raise the positive power of 1 over 3 okay so how do you find the critical points of this function so of course we've already established to say you get to find the critical points where the derivative is equal to 0 now you notice one thing about this is if you have got 2 over 3x raised to the power 1 over 3 this can never be equal to 0 no matter what you're going to do it can never be equal to 0 meaning that in this case you don't have what stationary points no stationary points but of course you know that if you plug in the value of 0 there x becomes 0 this whole thing becomes undefined right so now where the function is undefined that is referred to as what a critical point okay so a critical point is where the derivative of a function is undefined in this case this is the derivative so the derivative is undefined when x is equal to 0 so it's the critical point becomes 0 comma you find the y coordinate by going back to the original function which is 0 raised to a certain power which is still 0 so that is a critical point so this is what differentiates now the critical points from the stationary points clearly with such an example so for the sake of your practice I want you to just try out these two two interesting questions consider a case where y is equal to x e to the power negative 3 x determine the critical points and then one more would be x plus 1 over x determine the critical points 